Uh, so welcome everybody. I apologize for being a few minutes late. Um, this is a meeting, of, yes, of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. And um, a notice of the meeting was published on September 8th and September 15th. I'm David Bloomberg. Voting members with me tonight are Elizabeth Silver and Maureen Scanlon. And Carolyn Mish is here from the city of Northampton, providing staff support. Um, we have um, two items on the agenda for tonight, but before we get to those, um, I'll just repeat that um, the uh, procedure is to have, uh, uh, when we uh, open the hearing on each agenda item, to uh, have the representative or the applicant um, present a brief overview of the application. The board will have a chance to ask questions and, um, and after the board has asked its questions, uh, anyone who might be here from the public will have an opportunity to address the board relating to that specific application. I ask that everybody who speaks uh, first give your name and address for the record that we're keeping. Um, uh, I, I, I will announce that the meeting is being video recorded. And before we get to the first agenda item, we always uh, give the public an opportunity to comment to the board on matters unrelated to the um, to the uh, agenda item. So, our, uh, Carolyn, do we see any members of the public other than the two applicants or their representatives? Um, I don't see anybody with raised hands. So okay. No. So, no raised hands. So, we'll move on uh, to the first item on the agenda, which is an application for a special permit for a larger front wall sign by Andrew Klopaki, 199 Pine Street, Florence, map ID 22B-109. Um, and uh, I'll invite the applicant or the representative of the applicant to briefly present the application. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Andrew Klopaki, again, re representing Pioneer Valley Books, also known as uh, Pioneer Valley Educational Press over at 199 Pine Street. Um, and I'm hopefully the board is familiar with the, the area. If not, I can uh, take and share my screen and take a quick look at a couple of pictures, if that's okay. Sure. Okay. So this is um, the... Pine Street location. Uh, this is Pine. This is the six-story brushworks building next to it. Uh, this large rectangle uh, at an angle is the building in question. Uh, right here is the Sam's uh, Food Mart. Uh, the main size of this building is uh, 330 feet long by 220 feet deep. Um, can you see this uh, representation of the sign? Yes. Okay, so this is um, uh, what we're applying for is uh, two signs um, totaling uh, uh, 100 square feet. When we initially made the application, I was, you know, uh, we, we were told to stay under 100 square feet. Um, but the reason we're uh, going through the appeal here is we're looking to add two signs due to the nature of the, the proximity of the building to the road. Uh, it's uh, just over 20 feet uh, away, it's a little close. And we want to ensure that traffic coming down Pine Street uh, for visitors and the like, we would put a sign on this uh, western corner of the of south facing wall near our main entrance. Um, and the second uh, sign that we're looking to apply, which has put us into the again into the uh, appeal process here, is uh, one on our west wall, um, primarily for truck traffic directing them to our docks for any trucks that might come up Florence Road or Nonatuck Street. Um, sometimes they will, by the time they realize they're at our building, they'd have to then, you know, either pull into the Sam's parking lot or navigate around Corticelli and Nonatuck. Uh, and <clears throat> as you're aware, that building's kind of close to the road and it's, it's kind of, uh, people kind of drive quickly through there anyway. So we're uh, looking to minimize our impact on traffic as much as we can. So um, again, to give you an idea of the scale, um, we're looking at putting a um, 42 square foot sign uh, up here. The, this wall represents a total of 20 feet in height. 
Um, these lower tan panels are 16 feet and the top panel is, is four feet. Um, again, the entire, this entire uh, building length is 330 feet. If you add that, uh, multiply that rather times the 20 feet in wall height, we're looking at over 6,600 square feet. And I believe we're allowed uh, up to seven and a half percent of that, uh, which would be close to a 500 square foot sign. We just want to put up a smaller one here. <laughs> Uh, this is also at the behest of Northampton Fire and Police, so um, they can quickly locate our building. Um, okay. That's, that's, uh, that's the main stay of it. I have... Thank you. Any questions from the board members? I don't really have any questions. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Maureen. Carolyn. The reason this is even coming before us because they fall within the um, total uh, maximum sign limit is that there were two signs rather than one. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. And um, thank you for the presentation. Is the measurement does do those dimensions include the wording on both signs that says one ninety nine Pine Street? Well, if the letters um, are an additional 12 inches um, below uh, the numbers, that is, of uh, 199 Pine, is another 12 okay. inches Thank you. Uh, okay. in height. Uh, okay. On the larger format and on the smaller, you know, it's also 12 inches on the, on the smaller okay. sign as well. Smaller sign is only um, 25 square feet. You add and you can see the along the permit here, um, we have uh, 25 square feet for the sign, 37 for the sign and letters. And is the um, street address already indicated anywhere else on the building? There's a couple of um, old stickers that you might buy at the hardware store that are right <laughs> next to <laughs> right next to the main entrance. It's it's uh, it's really you know this is overdue. Uh, I'm recently took over this position, and you know, I want to you know, make sure that it's easier for the public, the uh, emergency services, and our trucking partners to know where we are. And this is um, just a, a, another sort of administrative question for Carolyn, I think, but should they decide at some point to change the design of the signs? Are they able to just do that without our, without a, needing any new permissions if they're gonna stay within the, the number of signs and the size of the signs? Well, because this is the number, those one sign, if they change the logo or the size, you could, um, because it requires special permit, you're approving what's on in the application. However, you could, as part of your decision, say that you're approving the sign and you're also approving that second sign up to seven and a half percent of that facade wall if you wanted to do that. And then that way they wouldn't have to come back if their logo changed, it sort of shifted the size of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's my list of questions, thank you. My only question is, it doesn't appear to be, but it's not lit, right? The sign is, there's no That's lighting. Correct. Yeah, we, yeah. Don't, we don't have any attention to lighting it. Yeah. I'm all set, well, I don't have any yeah. questions. Me, me too, are, are there, Carolyn, uh, I'll ask if there's any members of the public who wanted to address this application. Do you? Uh... I, don't, I don't see any raised hands. Okay, so I guess uh, I move if we to uh, close the public hearing. Good. Second. I'll, Do we have... I'll second. I'll second that. Okay, and since we're virtual, we need a roll call vote, please, Carolyn, just on the motion to close the public hearing. Maureen Scanlon. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth Silver. Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yes, that's unanimous. Okay. And are we ready for a motion on the application? Um, do we have discussion? Uh, we could do that before or after the motion, but certainly we could do it now if you'd like to, to discuss it. No, we can move forward. Okay. I move that we uh, approve the application for the two wall signs um, and that the, the second one um, whatever Carolyn's language was about seven and a half percent of the facade wall, add that on. Okay, so allowance for the sign to be as large as the seven and a half percent area. 
Yep. Okay. I'll second that. And uh, now I guess any discussion now before we vote, we have a second. Well, I would just say I'm as a, I, I'm, it's in my neck of the woods and I'm greatly going to appreciate the um, benefits of to traffic from these signs. I think it's a really sort of responsible choice and decision. So very much in support of it. Yeah. And, um, and I guess for the record, we should um, confirm that or acknowledge that the requirements of the uh, section of the zoning ordinance uh, that have to be satisfied to allow more than one sign have been have been satisfied. Only uh, the signs are only are located only where they're otherwise permitted, and uh, we've alluded to the architecture of the building and the location of the building and, and the need for the additional sign in the public interest, and apparently uh, other public agencies in Northampton have as well. And of course, um, we're specifying the exact sign permitted size and location as set forth in the application. So uh, any other discussion? That was a perfect <laughs> summary. Thank you, David. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so I guess, I guess now we could take the roll call vote on the motion to, um, to grant the application for the permit with the one modification that was mentioned with the motion. Okay, Maureen Scanlon. In favor. Elizabeth Silver. Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yes, that's unanimous. Okay. So uh, congratulations um, to the applicant. Um, and uh, I think we can move on to, <laughs> yeah, are there any other, if there are no other questions to the, um, um, the second item on the agenda for tonight, it's past 535, so we can hear it. Well, and that thank was you the all. okay. That's thank awesome. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Um, the request for a commercial finding for Rock Valley Heating and Air Conditioning, West Hampton Road, Northampton, Map ID 41 6. And I understand there's a history and some background here, in part because the property straddles the line with the um, town of West Hampton. And there's been a decision by the West Hampton board, uh, which has been provided to us for uh, pertinent to the uh, portion of the land that's on the West Hampton side of the line. Um, so um, I will ask if the applicant or the representative of the applicant would like to uh, address the board. Hi, I'm Amanda Zadonis Kemp and I represent the applicant. Um, we are seeking a finding. We have a piece of property that is in both West Hampton and Northampton. Our frontage is all in Northampton and requires us to cross over in order to access the buildings. Um, I believe there's a corner of a building that is in Northampton, but a majority of our use does occur in West Hampton. So my clients are looking to operate a um, HVAC business. Um, we have been in front of the town of West Hampton. We do have a decision to be able to do it. Um, the, the building and the um, site itself does have a history of being a non-conforming um, use. It's continued to be used for commercial purposes, uh, at least since 1955, we trace back to, and I believe prior to that. So because of the nature of the lot and the fact that we have to cross over to access our buildings is why we are in front of your board. Thank you. Um, nice to see you, Attorney Zadonis. Nice to see you. Um, the um, any questions from the board? Not at this point. So this is uh, the finding. A finding. So the standard is uh, uh, requires us to make a determination that the expansion or alteration alteration of the pre existing non conforming use is not substantially more detrimental to the uh, characteristics of the neighborhood. Um, 
So we are actually reducing the use in a lot of ways. Um, the last use was for both a nursery and a landscaping company, which had um, customers driving in and out to pick up garden supplies, things of that nature. My clients intend to um, drive into the site, load up their trucks, and then leave for the day because they do a majority of their work outside of the location. And what I saw from the application is that the hours are limited from, I think it was, uh, it was at eight to 5.30 or seven to 5.30, something I, like that. But it's, it's so. limited to the week and those hours and no weekends, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Good. Any, any other questions from board members? <clears throat> oh, well, I, I guess I would like to clarify um, that they're coming before us because it's a change of, hands of business, not necessarily a change of impact on use? Well, um, correct. So uh, basically there's been some um, different interpretation and in, um, in between West Hampton and North Hampton, the previous use, um, I mean, although it sounds like there was some ancillary, maybe some retail component to it, we evaluated that use as a trade use a landscape business, and then this is still a trade use. So from the from a categories perspective, that category hasn't changed. Um, but because of the um, issues that arose on the West Hampton side, um, they wanted to make sure that this went through the zoning board process in Northampton um, to make sure that any areas that needed to be addressed in Northampton were done. And um, I, I guess I'll, add, if there are no other questions from the board, I'll ask if anyone appears to be uh, here from the public uh, raising a hand to address this application. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, Attorney McLaughlin, if I may be heard. Sure. Yes, I represent um, Ms. McMahon and um, Yvandre, the two abutters who are Northampton residents. Um, I just want to address the issues uh, uh, quickly. One thing is that the application states that this uh, is made pursuant to 250-9.3 sub 8. I think that should be 350-9.3 uh, yeah, sub 8. That sounds right to me. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. Um, essentially, um, what was going on in West Hampton was they had a, a retail store there for many years. Uh, the HV uh, company wants to come in and make it their home, but they're also using the former retail structure for light manufacturing. Uh, and that's what caused the issues in uh, West Hampton because West Hampton, unlike North Hampton, uh, states that in their bylaw, as opposed to North Hampton's ordinance, that you cannot switch from uh, one prior nonconformity to a different nonconformity. Um, there was a, a grant of a permit we appealed to the land court and uh, there, I think we had a good case, uh, but attorney Tanner uh, was uh, raising the issue of standing, saying we didn't have enough damages and we didn't want to try the case on a standing issue. So uh, Mark and I worked out a detailed set of uh, conditions that we could agree to. And uh, we uh, got a stay from the land court judge, came back to West Hampton, presented all of the conditions to, um, to the uh, board in West Hampton, and they approved it. So uh, what we're asking is that um, you make the finding that this use um, of the Northampton property to, to access the West Hampton property is not substantially more detrimental to the neighbors so long as they abide by all of the terms of the, find, of the special permit, not finding, of the uh, special permit finding from West Hampton um, essentially, we agree. We've re re uh, agreed on all the terms. Uh, we're just asking that you, in essence, incorporate um, the conditions from West Hampton and state that so long as these conditions are abided by, there's no substantial detriment to the neighbors in Northampton. But wouldn't, wouldn't the applicant be obligated on, on the West Hampton side of the line to comply with the conditions of the West Hampton decision, uh, no matter and and no matter what what we say or do not say about those conditions, well, that is true. Yes, um, but um, right now they do need zoning relief 
because they are changing a use. Uh, there's there's case law to the effect that um, using frontage, using access, using property to get to another municipality is itself a use under your ordinances. So they are changing a use under your ordinances. They're going from what had been a retail place for many years to a light manufacturing uh, place. And indeed, one of the conditions, condition number nine, specifically says that um, uh, by sometime next year, they have to try to uh, make the sound emanating, the light manufacturing sound emanating from the building less uh, to the a point where it complies with your ordinance. We, we specifically state that it's got to abide by both the Northampton uh, sound ordinance and the West Hampton sound ordinance. Right. Um, because but, where, where the residential people are that it affects are really in Northampton, not as well. Attorney right, McLaughlin, but, if, 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 we, if we approve this, it's implicit in our order that we're approving it because and that, you'll, that they'll be complying with the West Hampton conditions. We don't want to be in a position where if some of those conditions change over time that we have to come back and revisit this. I, I think an approval of the request is implicitly acknowledging those conditions without having to explicitly incorporate them into our decision. That, that would seem to be my take on it. Well, but what, what I'm saying is, um, as for Northampton, leaving West Hampton alone, um, they are doing something in violation of your ordinances. They're, they're switching the use. They may have had a grandfathered use for retail going back to the 1950s, but they're making it a light manufacturing facility, which can't be done in this. So district. we are not actually making it a light manufacturing. The light manufacturing is ancillary to the HVAC business. It does not occur on a daily basis. It only occurs when my clients are unable to purchase the parts that need to be used and they have to retrofit for older um, buildings that they're working in. It's at a very limited scope and the town of West Hampton found it to be ancillary to them operating their business out of that location. How, and how frequently um, does, sorry, go ahead, Carolyn. Sorry, I, I was just going to clarify that we classify it as a trades use. There may be some ancillary retail that happens on the West Hampton side. The use um, is entirely, except for a corner of a building in West Hampton. And yes, the um, function of access to that use um, is in North Hampton or one access is. Um, but the bulk of the property is in West Hampton. And as a trades use, all sorts of trades are allowed under that category, including plumbers, um, electricians, and there is an assumed or a presumption that there will be some assemblage of things on site, but we don't consider that light manufacturing. So that be, that's part of the trade function. Um, it's not like, um, um, you know, trade is not like an FW web in the industrial park, but there are some, there's an acknowledgement that some of that goes on. So we wouldn't classify that as a change from, um, because it's still in the trades category, I guess I would say. Well, um, when the application was made in West Hampton, um, Sister Council specifically referenced that they were going under the light manufacturing provision of West Hampton. And but that may be the way that it's interpreted in West Hampton. <laughs> so what I'm saying is in Northampton, we have probably a different interpretation. And so the zoning board here needs to evaluate it based on the Northampton zoning. And I don't, I think it would be problematic to wrap a Northampton decision around a West Hampton decision, you're completely distinct bodies and you're evaluating it based on the zoning in Northampton and the evaluation <laughs> criteria in Northampton. And I think as um, Elizabeth Silver, you mentioned that, um, you know, you have to find that it makes, that it appro is approvable in Northampton based on what you're evaluating and they have to meet both of those standards in West Hampton and Northampton. And just a bit on the noise, no matter what the use is, the noise ordinance is applicable in Northampton, right. right? So at the property line, if they're exceeding a noise level, Northampton code enforcement would enforce that noise ordinance, no matter 
who's using it or what the use is, it's applicable across the board. Right, I, I think that I was gonna say that too. Um, we don't need to say that in our, as a condition of our decision, it's, it's already an existing ordinance that the applicant would be obligated to comply with. And if the applicant fails to comply with that noise ordinance with respect to the parcel on the Northampton side, the remedy exists under the ordinance for the neighbors. Also, um, I think the neighbor's remedy, um, if there's a failure to comply um, with the conditions in the West Hampton decision, it would be under the West Hampton decision. Uh, in, in other words, um, it, would be, it would be to seek enforcement for failure to comply with the West Hampton decision. Exactly. I think we'd be getting ourselves into a quagmire that we don't want to be in when we adopt the same conditions. Uh, we don't want to be in the business of enforcing what West Hampton's rules are. And the conditions were made under West Hampton's rules right. and under exactly. West Hampton's categories and its own bylaw. Not um, all of them, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, number nine specifically references your ordinance not West Hampton. I mean, West, West Hampton's and North Hampton's. Um, that's the, the, the bylaw, your ordinance provision pertaining to the noise. Which they need but, the no, but noise is governed by the North Hampton ordinance, no matter what. Right, but we've given them some time to fix the noise. I mean, so if the noise, the, in essence, it helps them. It's like saying if they're loud right now, I could go and complain to, you know, Mr. Flagg that they're loud right now. But this I, I this think you different. could. I, I well, think you could but, under under. But we've we've agreed to a condition that says that they've got some time to fix the noise problem, and I'm and I'm well. Told, that I'm that sounds like almost a contractual arrangement. It well, was part of the settlement, I imagine. Yes, it was, and and it was, and it said that they have until such and such a date next year, and that um, uh, they will remedy the situation by that time. And it will at that time be in conformity with your bylaw and your excuse me your ordinance and West Hampton's bylaw. So um, what I I would expect your clients to to comply with whatever agreement they made with respect to the the West Hampton decision, but it's not it's not even within our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. um, except to say I would also, that, yeah. go ahead. I was just going to say just to note people who are not party to this um, decision or the court case you know, may find that there's a noise problem and file a complaint with the building commissioner, despite whether what arrangements were made between these two parties, the building commissioner would still be obligated to enforce the Northampton zoning. I'm, I'm, yeah, that makes sense. I'm also hearing, Terry McLaughlin, that you're suggesting what you're asking for would be beneficial to the applicant, but the applicant's counsel is not asking for that. Um, but 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 more to the point, I I don't know that I th I think we've all voiced why we're not comfortable just with a wholesale incorporation of the conditions of the West Hampton decision into our decision, and rather I think we can make the decision that um, under the categories and definitions on, of the Northampton ordinance, as they apply here, we are comfortable that this change does not. Uh, is not substantially more detrimental. Are, are you, you're not arguing, Attorney McLaughlin, that it is, are you? Well, um, I, I don't, I, I think that this, as I said, that the, the applicant's own attorney, when they applied in West Hampton, said that they were applying under light manufacturing. And that the, the terms and conditions of that are distinctly different than a plumber or an electrician putting together things. Uh, this is far beyond that. This is power high powered you know, presses and, and machinery. This isn't a plumber or a, this is nothing like that. Um, but you know, I had agreed with litigation counsel that so long as this was incorporated, um, that, that it would not be a problem. The other thing is that the, the case law is clear that um, you going over a property to get to a use is itself, uh, you know, the use itself and, um, so I, I just uh, would you know, request that you, if you wanna pick and choose, maybe at least pick 
the, the condition that does reference the Northampton bylaw ordinance, which is only number, I think it's only the ninth condition is the only one that does that. And I think if, if uh, that's the one that references Northampton's ordinance. And that's the, the most important one, to be honest with you. It's hard on a Zoom meeting. I'm I'm his client, so I just texted him because there's not a way to communicate. So he's he's just reading my text. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean there there were other other um, provisions. Oh, wait, can I interrupt for a second? I'm looking at number nine, and this is this is a condition that refers to noise, right? Yes. Yeah. So I I, I again I think that what we've been saying all along is applicable that it would be subject to the Northampton noise ordinance and there's not a good reason that i've heard for us to make any further reference to the west hampton conditions in our order well if i understand you correctly you're saying we have to comply with it regardless whether you reference it or not correct correct yes. yep. correct mm -hmm. and the point i think that attorney mclaughlin is making is that under that theory the abutter i assume it's an abutter would not have to wait uh, if there were a noise problem, a violation of the Northampton ordinance, uh, noise ordinance on the Northampton with respect to the Northampton parcel. But, but, but my response was maybe not. But, but they've also entered into an agreement, presumably relating to the settlement uh, and the conditions in the West Hampton, and that happens to by agreement. You can say. You're going to comply, but but by as a matter of law in Northampton, you have to comply with the Northampton ordinance. And I don't think, I just don't want to cross this literal boundary into West Hampton, uh, in in the order that's issued by this board in Northampton. And I, I don't see that it's necessary on this point about noise. It's it's I don't find that compelling. It's you know, this, the ordinance in Northampton says what it says, and the applicant has to comply with it whatever happens. So well, I'm inclined to um, move I'm, forward here. I'm, I understand, but it's not a tradesman's or, um, place. It's nothing like that. They actually do light manufacturing in this building. So to so say- that's a know, different issue than number nine that you're that referencing. Is, that, that is. So but you're either making the argument that it's substantially detrimental and we're expanding it, um, or, I mean, I'm not sure what you're asking for because you, you keep referencing nine, which they're telling us that we have to comply with, but then you keep saying that it's, you know, substantially more than the current use. So do you, I mean, I don't think we need to incorporate number nine into any finding that this board may find um, because we have to comply regardless. Yes, well, I guess my point is this. I mean, if there, there's many provisions that were that they're supposed to abide by in in West Hampton. And the case law is clear that access in Northampton must is is the same as doing something in Northampton. And we're stating that we don't have a problem. It's not going to be substantially more detrimental to my clients if they abide by the um the agreement in, in West Hampton. That's essentially the, the gist of it. I mean, um, and it's not a, some, you know, plumber's facility. It's a light manufacturing facility. And we're saying it's not gonna be substantially detrimental to us if they abide by what they agreed to in West Hampton. Which we have already agreed to at the night of our West Hampton. Right, right, I know, yeah. And I, I, and I, I'm can, saying, we, can we just take the equivalent of, I know we're not a court, the equivalent of judicial notice that an agreement has been made with on the West Hampton side as reflected in the West Hampton decision. And we would expect the parties to comply with that. And, and if they don't, their rights will accrue uh, under, under the West Hampton ordinance and under the terms of the West Hampton decision. Um, but um, oh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna lose power soon. Um, that would be acceptable uh, to us. Except to plug in, sorry. <laughs> Um, um, alternatively, could I just suggest that if you're hearing now in the hearing that maybe it's slightly, it's, it's a little bit more than a trade use, you could certainly evaluate that. Okay, so if it's 
slightly different from a trade use, then perhaps it is a change from one non-conforming use to another. And based on what's been presented to you, make a determination about whether it meets the criteria in 9.3 for not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood for the change from a trade to a trade plus ancillary uh, occasional man light manufacturing based on the fact that this only happens occasionally, the trips are much less than the previous non-conforming use. So you have that information in front of you and you can make that um, and determine whether or not there are any appropriate conditions that you think make it fit in that category. And if there aren't, and it just fits by what you've heard and what's been presented, then make the decision that way. Yeah, I, I agree with that analysis, Carolyn. I'm think, saying you can do that analysis and find that you can make the, the, the change of use from one category to another category pursuant to subsection eight, and state that um, that it will be substantially not detrimental if they abide by the terms of the West Hampton um, decision. That's essentially what I was saying, probably inarticulately, I'm sorry, but- Carolyn, is that what you're suggesting? Because- No, I'm suggesting on your own merit, on the Northampton zoning ordinance merits, what you've heard, does it meet that, um, the, the criteria in 9.3, if it does, um, it, it could either meet it, it could meet it with conditions, or you could determine that it doesn't meet it. So um, I think it's up to you to determine based on what you've heard, whether it meets the Northampton criteria. And if some of those conditions in West Hampton make you feel more comfortable in feeling that it meets that, you can certainly apply them as your own, you know, as similar conditions, but I wouldn't reference the West Hampton decision at all in your decision. Um, I, I would just create your own decision and determine whether it needs conditions or not. So in switching so, to a different use, are we setting and, and flipping the analysis? Are we setting a precedent um, on the analysis of the use of yeah, uh, I have property. a question about that. I mean, that's not the request that's on the table. It, it, and if the request is a change of use, or maybe we just have that discussion tonight, but if the request is a change of use, I'm not equipped to know the difference between what the criteria for light manufacturing is versus trade. I mean, I, I do feel like we've gotten some good information about how, about what we think the use, um, intended use is in relation to the category of trade, but I, I don't feel, it feels like it's a, a different request, the change of use. Oh, maybe I can clarify. So I think, so it, so the zone, the way this was advertised was for a change of use because yeah. that, that's what the, um, essentially the court said, okay, you made this decision, go back to both bodies and, for that evaluation under in Northampton 9.3. Um, so um, I think you could certainly probe the applicant a little bit further to find out what in fact are the uses. I don't know myself that this triggers a light manufacturing. You could just say, well, it's maybe it's not the same as the typical trades use, but you're not necessarily, um, you know, I guess you can find out, you can ask more questions about what the use is, but I don't think, I think what's been advertised is a change of use. Um, and you can review that and what's in front of you and what you've heard as either an up or down vote on this application. Let me ask the question again, Attorney McLaughlin. Did I hear you correctly that all you're really asking, because Carolyn has sort of opened the door to not referencing the West Hampton decision, but to the extent we feel is necessary and appropriate, picking and choosing and repeating some of the one or more conditions that are stated in the West Hampton application. Did I hear that correct, Carolyn, did I say that correctly? And if so, Attorney McLaughlin, are you saying that all you're really looking for us to do is include condition number nine 
of course, as it applies to the Northampton ordinance, not well, well, I mean, in our decision. I mean, if you if you are if you don't want to incorporate the entire decision by reference, then um, if you and it is a change of use as because the application says it's a change of use and it is a change of use, then um, uh, you could look at the most pertinent conditions from West Hampton and make them your own so that it's not substantially more detrimental to the abutters who are all my clients. I, I, the, the pertinent abut abutters are my clients So in, no in Northampton. So I don't think there's gonna be a problem if we, you know, like maybe hours of operation, the fact that it's only, uh, they can't sublet out um, to some other type of entity, uh, the, the, the noise provision, you know, pick uh, the, the most important ones and just make them your own. And then you can say, well, with these conditions, it's not going to be substantially more detrimental. And don't even reference the fact, if you don't want to, that those are the, the same exact conditions from West Hampton, but the hours of operation, the noise, um, the fact that it's going to be just these guys and, you know, that is the operation. We're not going to see a change. Um, if you picked out I think the hours of operation is number three. Um, um, number nine is the one pertaining to the noise. Um, there's many others, but um, those are some of the crucial ones. Uh, there's also a provision that we wanna make it clear that it's just gonna be this applicant. He's not gonna sublet to somebody else there. Um, if, if those-, those What are paragraph is that one? I'm trying to find that paragraph. Uh, maybe my client would remember. Uh, um, I was gonna add in the beginning, there is a description of the actual uses or the, description of the activities. Um, I don't have it right in front of me right now, John, but. Yeah, Can you right say your name button. and address for the record, please? Sure, Maureen McMahon, 1504 okay. West Hampton Road. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, I mean, no, number one sets forth what's going to be there uh, pursuant to the special permit in West Hampton. You could say that it's not gonna be substantially more detrimental uh, and number one, make it your own number one. And then number three is the hours of operation. Number four, uh, number four is the one that references that the structures are only gonna be used by Rock Valley. Right, number four. Uh, and number two says what they not, what they can't do. So. One, two, three, four, and nine, you could just simply make those your own. Well, but I don't think we need noise. Maybe the hours of operation, but the noise pieces in the ordinance, we don't we don't need to state that condition at all. Right, but but this this is much more specific than just don't obey the noise. Um, you wouldn't need that in any finding. I mean, this is much more specific. It talks about what where the noise is emanating from, when uh, where it's gonna be measured. It's much more specific. Um, yeah, I, I'm not inclined to go more more specific. I, I think I would just that that to me teeters on the edge of incorporating the West Hampton provisions that I don't want to do. I think we rely on our own Northampton ordinances, and that's it. Well, could I just also suggest that um, you don't in Northampton um, you don't typically grant a permit to a person or a business, and that um, business names change. Um, the type of business might change and it might, if they do change, then they, they may or may not trigger another finding application in front of the Northampton Zoning Board based on the building commissioner's interpretation. Um, so I would not recommend adopting that you're assigning it to a business in particular. I'm still struggling with the idea of adding conditions to our application, which effectively govern the use of property that's not in Northampton. And that has already been determined. But there's clear, clear a Supreme Court case law that says that access to a property amounts to using the property for whatever the property is used for over the access area. Even <laughs> property in a different town. Yes, yes. Property in a different district, property in a different town, property in a different state. But you're not suggesting that the conditions that West Hampton put on the property cannot be adhered to 
um, cannot be required to be adhered to in the Northampton corner of the building, are you? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, um, You're not suggesting we need to incorporate conditions because otherwise the business wouldn't have to comply with the West Hampton conditions when they're in the little corner of the building that's in Northampton. No, no, no. Right. I, it's only a small corner of the building that's in Northampton. Right. You, so these... there's no there's no reason to suggest that there has to be any can, can, any additional um, conditions put on the business beyond what's in West Hampton for them to comply with the part of the business that's in Northampton. No, no, so I'm, I, I, I'm with David. I mean, I don't, I, I'm, I'm still not seeing a, a good argument for our going to the extent of incorporating a whole bunch of conditions that are already there. Well, okay. I mean, the, the case law states that if all this happening in your town is access to another town or another, you know, or, or another district, I mean, if, if you still, you still have to find that what they're doing for access, what they're doing in West Hampton, okay, is something that they couldn't do in this division, in this district of Northampton. They're doing light manufacturing, okay? And they can't do that without a finding. And we're saying that, okay, if you wanna say that it's not substantially detrimental under Northampton's bylaw, under subsection eight, if you wanna say it's not substantially more detrimental under subsection eight, at least, Say, well, it won't be substantially more detrimental if you abide by the hours of operation, if you say what you could, you're going to do there, if you say what you're not going to do there, if you abide by those terms, then it's not detrimental to my clients who are Northampton residents and who want uh, this to abide by Northampton law also. I'm not dealing with the issue that there's a tiny corner of the building, which it's, you know, it has some effect, but it's the access, all of the frontage, and a good chunk of the lot is in. Northampton, and the law is clear that that means that you treat the access as if the work that takes place on the other part of the property is taking place in the access area. You treat access the same as what's going on once you get past the access area. If I may, that's exactly why we're here to get a finding. And I don't, regardless of what conditions Northampton places, we have to comply with the West Hampton conditions. I mean, a finding right. is whether or not it's more detrimental or not to the neighborhood. Regardless of what Northampton finds, we have to comply with the West Hampton decision. And I know. We're going round and round about the exact same thing. Right, right. I know. That's why it would be easy to incorporate it by reference. But if we don't want to do that, then we can simply state that it, this is not going to be detrimental to the Northampton residents who I represent. So long as you have good hours of operation, so long as you stay. Yeah, no, okay, okay. Can I get to stop you? You know, I, yes, we're, we have been around and around. Um, David, can I suggest that we see if there's anybody else that has um, anything to say and then move yeah. on? Sure. In this, yeah. Uh, Carolyn, is, do we see anyone else who wants to speak or does anyone see? I don't see any raised hands. No. My, does my client want to speak? Well, my, again, my client is here. No. All right. All right, so the other folks that are on this hearing are just witnessing this, or are they your clients as well, Attorney McLaughlin? I believe those are my clients. Attorney are, clients. Yes, my clients. I see. Okay, okay. Right. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, good. You, you do have to make some finding as to she is changing the use. In the, she's changing the use of something in Northampton. But You've argued this already. Yeah, I understand yeah. what you're, uh, what you're right. saying. Um, let me flip this, or, and, and I understand Attorney McLaughlin, what you're saying, you're, you're saying that access uh, alone makes the use part of the access parcel. Exactly. And, exactly. and we need to have a basis for finding that it's not uh, more detrimental. Exactly. Um, so exactly. let me flip this around. Yep. Does Attorney Kemp, just for the sake of argument, Attorney Kemp and Carolyn, have any objection if we did simply, it's not incorporating conditions, it's, it's stating as our own conditions, the two or three conditions that were mentioned about ours. Because if no one has any objection to it and we're making them our own conditions because of this idea that access, that the use 
is the use even for the portion that is simply just providing access. Do, are there objections to that? Just so I felt out that angle. I mean, it's the same conditions we've already agreed exactly. to. Exactly. So, so you wouldn't I have an objection because you've already agreed to it. We've already agreed to it. So I guess I would, and Carolyn, do, do you? Um, I, I just want to double check. I am sorry, I don't have the application in front of me. Does the application state the hours of operation? I don't believe it. Yes, it does. It's number does it? three. It says um, uh, Monday through Friday between the hours of 7.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. and shall not occur on weekends. That, that's that's, that's not the application. Can, um, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's, no. I'm sorry. You're right. That's the Westfield. Um, the West West Hampton. Hampton. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me see if I can well, find well, we would We would be adding these as conditions to our decision. I'm just wondering if no one else has any objections. I've got the, well, I've got the application here. So yeah. just a second. So all I'm suggesting is yes, you could say um, as presented in the hearing, you know, if they comply with the hours of operation, then you find that it, under Northampton ordinance that it doesn't, it's not substantially more detrimental than the previous non conforming um, function at the site. And if it is in the application, then you don't need to, you know, right. restate it. You can just say, but well, well, it's not in the application. It's not not in the application. So yeah, you could do that. Um, also, I, I think that you when you say it, you have to say what it is. So I think you need paragraphs one, two, and three. It says what it is and what it's not going to be. Right. And if they do that, so, the hours Kemp, you, three. you'll have no objections, Attorney Kemp, because you've already you've already agreed to these conditions, literally, yes, word for do. word. We do not so, I, so I'm just trying to sort of get past the impasse here. So and and hopefully. Every you know this project can move forward, and no one has to file any appeals or go back to court or whatever. Um, so can I interrupt you though? Don't disagree here. I'm, say again, sorry. Well, I, I let me just throw this question in because I don't know how this operates, but should there be any change on the West Hampton end of anything um, to, for example, a change in the hours? Um, what does that do to our ruling if we specifically incorporate ours? Do we so uh, come uh, back to us, wouldn't they? Yeah. So For why why yeah. would we do this this? Why would we incorporate these things if we if it could set up some future problem or or more work for us when by not doing anything? They're they're obligated to comply with the conditions that are set up there. And that's it. All, all we'd be finding is making the finding as we often do without going into any conditions that something is less detrimental. Um, and that would be the end of it. I, I, don't, I mean, I understand you're trying to figure out a path forward here, but I'm just, I'm a little bit concerned about the future possibilities of you know, raising a double set of work and possible conflict between the two between the city and the town, it may not. It may not. It may not be a reasonable concern, and it may be such a remote possibility that you know we, we could we could do those conditions. I I don't I don't know. I just try to figure out whether or not there is that concern. I think you just. I think it would just be that they would have to amend both permits and come back to both bodies. Um, if you had that condition, but if you feel that that's the thing that makes this substantially um you know does makes Less it detrimental. not substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conformity then absolutely you can you can put, put it, it in, in. And, okay yeah. so right. so why about the hours out of all of the conditions i i have to say i'm in great admiration for the negotiations that were conducted and the point you reached between west hampton and the um the HVAC company, and it, it's remarkable, honestly, the, the detail and the depth of thought that's been put into it. And I think it's to everyone's benefit, but I don't, uh, to, the nub of what I feel like we're up against is just simply deciding if, and I'm the one who brought this up and I was callous, I think, or, or just a little understated about it, but it's not, it's new owners and a new business. And if it's the same, category of business um, in Northampton 
by Northampton's um, considerations that than the previous business was, then I don't see I don't see a reason to tie in new conditions, even if they're parallel to the West Hampton um, terms, tie in new conditions to our um, to our decision. I do think we should make sure we're clear that the type of use is that, that we feel confident that the type of use is still in the category of trade versus what would be a different category like manufacturing. It, it, but, but it also it, goes, it, even, it, even though they're different categories in each town, I think it goes to the issue of, and, and Elizabeth, I was, I was where you are earlier in this discussion where it's like, oh, this doesn't feel right. But now I'm thinking, but so what is the basis for our determining that it's not more detrimental um, if we're not, um, if not that uh, the conditions that have already been agreed to by the parties, there's no dispute between the parties here. Mm -hmm. It's a dispute among us. <laughs> um, it's not a dispute, but you know what I mean. It's a discussion among us. Um, if should maybe we should be making as a, as a condition to our decision uh, a couple of these conditions that go to the intensity of use, the including the hours. Uh, I guess that's the question. Well, uh, I, I, that's it's reasonable to suggest that we include those conditions that um, that that are responsible for our decision that it's less detrimental however you want to say that. I mean, that's fine if you want to include that. I don't think there's any reason we can't, but we traditionally haven't done that. You know, we've okay. made a determination after a discussion that something either does or does not meet the standard and then went forward with a vote. So I think that it's fine. I, I'm not going to you know, I'm not going to hold this whole thing up on the basis of that. I think it's fine to put that in. Um, I think we just need to recognize that we don't have to, but if this is the way forward on this decision, then, you know, as long as it's just a couple of small things and it is the basis for our determination that it's not more detrimental, like the hours or, you know, less vehicular traffic or something along those lines, I'd have to, I don't want to go through the entire list okay. from West Hampton and, and pick and choose, you know, those things that, that may be, I think if we, we've recognized that, this business is going to generate less traffic and eventually less noise, maybe not immediately, um, and that the hours will be less. And, you know, I, that's fine. I, if we can leave it at that, I, I'm happy with it. I, I, I think one through three would do that. that yeah, one, that's one asking through. a lot because one through three goes on for almost, you know, at least a half a page, if not more. So, you know, we'd have to pare it down a bit here. Part of the problem here is, we have not scrutinized, at least I haven't, the West Hampton decision in preparation for what we're talking about doing here. And for that matter, we haven't seen a brief on the cases that Kearney McLaughlin is referring to that says you have to treat, you know, it's, it's but, but, but I'm, I don't really want to go there because there's no right. dispute between the parties. That's right. <laughs> so no, no, I, I, can, I would like to close the public hearing and have our discussion about what to include. Um, but before we close, just hear final statements without repeating yourselves um, from the attorneys. But if there is, David, you're running this meeting, so I don't mean to usurp it. I'm just trying to, to come to a conclusion here. I agree completely. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, do, do we, is there, well, and, but after, let me ask you this, Elizabeth, after we close, what are we going to do then study conditions one through three and just decide if we we want well, no, to no i think i think we hear now from the attorneys in closing as to which conditions they think constitute the That's basis good. for our determination that uh, it, it's yeah. not you know more detrimental and right. you know not a whole paragraph just hours of operation will be that's it you know that kind of thing and what's critical in making that decision that makes it a more attractive situation to the abutters at this point than what right. was there before. That's well, well put, well put. We, uh, Can I just say one thing? I just, just a process note. Um, yeah. I have a planning board meeting that starts at seven. 
but it's downtown. So I need to be downtown for five of seven at least. <laughs> so um, that would be great if the attorneys that have spoken already so much could um, be um, really expedited. Yes. Otherwise, I'm going to have to leave and you no, guys can No argument, up. just just the provision that you'd like to have as a yeah. short con, con, um, condition. Well, well, I, th I think... Um, You've got the but, hours. What else? Yes, the hours and what it is. I mean, what it is. Uh, number one, does state what they're going to do with the buildings. Uh, but what, just, where, just say what it is, as opposed to going into an argument about it, please. The, the, the main structures for the storage of material, fabrication of sheet metal, um, assembly of materials, uh, loading and unloading materials, uh, related office work, delivery of uh, materials, the use of the shed, what they're going to do that for deliveries. Um, all that number one uh, does is basically says what they're doing, because you have to say what they're Why doing. Why can't we just say it's an HVAC business? Okay, but um, it's an HVAC business with light manufacturing is what is what it is. And we're saying that um, that uh, and what it tells them that they're not supposed to do. It will be substantially. We're not going more. into what they're not supposed to do because that's already been determined and that's the, something they're going to abide by. All right. So. Well, I mean, the problem is we, we have to get some protection in West in Northampton. Um, I have North. These are Northampton clients. These are your. Okay, clients. we've heard your argument. Right. Okay, so there's two things: what the business does and what the hours are. Is there anything else? Well, if you don't want to do anything about the noise, those are the most important things: the hours of operation and what they're doing. Okay, I, I think noise is redundant, but we can consider that. Okay, those Attorney are your top Kemp. three priorities. We have Attorney no Kemp, is that okay with you? We have no objection. Okay, all right, David. Do you want a motion uh, to close the public hearing? Yeah, yeah I, th I think there's no one else from the public, right? Yeah. Ms. McMahon, was there anything else you wanted to say? Uh, the only comment I would make is that I've sent some text messages to my <laughs> attorney, and if he hasn't read them, he can read them and decide what's appropriate. <laughs> or what's I mean, they're, they're talking about submitting uh, a written proposal, but we'd like to get this done today. Um, in, indeed, all the attorneys uh, thought that we were just going to have all conditions in both towns. So it is going to be slight, and so did the judge. So we'll have to tell them that Northampton didn't want to do that, I guess. Yes, we're, we're the renegade zoning board. All right, so I move to close the public hearing. I'll second. Roll call, please. Uh, Maureen Scanlon? Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes, so the public hearing is closed. No more input from council or the public or other parties. Um, and then a motion, um, which I assume is going to be to grant the finding subject to uh, two conditions, right? And the first condition is to uh, take some of the use language, and the second is the hours language. And then, uh, and then we would determine based on that that, that it, the proposed the proposed change in use is not substantially more detrimental. So, I second and, what David just said as a motion. <laughs> you can't move I, it though. You got to move it. Okay. Yeah, uh, all right. All right. All right. Well, um, all right. I move that we accept uh, that we grant the finding um, based on the fact that the new business will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, than the prior use um, and that the conditions on which this is based um, is the reduction of hours or work hours from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 5.30, um, sorry, do we know offhand what I just said about the hours? Uh, uh, 7.30 to 5.30 p.m and no weekend hours, and that um, the business will be an HVAC business with light manufacturing. Those are the only two conditions that uh, I would. Yeah, I, I, I will second it with the, with the amended wording. You said reduced hours. You don't mean reduced hours. No, I hours, don't mean right? reduced hours. Okay. I just meant the okay. hours. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. sorry, I misspoke. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Do we have a second? Oh, that was a second. Oh, second. That was a second. 
Yeah. So just a roll call vote, please. Maureen Scanlon. Well, did, yes. what, did anybody have any other comments to make? I don't think so. Okay, good. Because I didn't include the noise and I just want to make that explicit yeah. that it's, yep. um, I consider I'm that aware. already. Northampton citizens retain all rights under the Northampton noise ordinance. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, Maureen? Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes, yes, that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Um, and do we need to move to adjourn before we lose Carolyn? Um, do we have anything else, Carolyn, other meetings or anything else you needed to mention? I don't. I think there is going to be an October 13th meeting, but um, you'll, I'll let you know about that. Ooh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Can I, I move to adjourn? Yes. Motion to adjourn, please. Move. Thanks. Second. And roll call. Uh, Maureen Scanlon? Yes. Uh, Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yes, that's unanimous.